So this donkey comes and he says to the tiger, Yo, you know that the grass is actually blue, right? The tiger is like, wait, what? Habibi, it's green. What do you mean it's blue? So the donkey is like, no, you're just acting dumb, man. You don't know that it's actually blue. It's not green. So the tiger is like, but you're the donkey. So basically they started arguing and the argument got heated. So the donkey and the tiger, they were like, you know what? We got to take this to the king. So they go to the king, which is the lion. And the donkey says to the king, excuse me, mister. Is it true that the grass is blue? So the lion says, Yes, it's true. And then the donkey was like, well, this tiger keeps disagreeing with me and he's annoying me, like he's really pissing me off. Can you please punish him? And the lion was like, okay, yo tiger, you're being punished for five years. Five years, you can't say a single word anymore. So the donkey was, was super happy, but the tiger couldn't do anything. So just like, okay, fine. But then the tiger asked the lion, he was like, excuse me, mister, but you do know that the grass is green, right? So like, why am I being punished? And the lion's like, well, yes, it is green. And the tiger is like, wait, what? Then wh why am I being punished, man? And the lion says, your punishment is not because whether the grass is green or blue. Your punishment, because how can such a creature that's so brave, so courageous and intelligent is arguing with a donkey? And then on top of that, you come to me, the king, and then waste my time with the silliness. It's the worst waste of time arguing with a donkey who doesn't even actually care about truth or reality. They just care about making themselves sound right, even though they're just being right about some illusion stuff. Now, why am I telling you this? Two reasons. One, because I'm hoping you're not going to become a donkey when you watch this video and be like, no, you're just saying some wrong stuff. This is not true. And two, because most of you guys are actually tigers or even lions. But most of you guys have actually forgotten that. Ever since you were born, you were basically surrounded by these donkeys. And those donkeys, they programmed you with donkey beliefs to the point where even now, like you reach the age of reason, right? And then you realize your whole life has just been a waste. Because not only are you living and interacting with a bunch of donkeys, but even your own thoughts are coming from donkeys. Like you've went so far into donkey world that you can't even agree with your own thoughts. So your whole life has just become like a battle between like the tiger you and the donkey you. And bro, this is actually like one of the saddest things that I know because if you actually think about it, what does a day-to-day -day look like of a person who've become a donkey? Metaphorically, I'm speaking. So these people, they've forgotten they're a lion or a tiger. So what they do is that they wake up drink some coffee, get in their car, drive in traffic, go to their work, and then spend the entire day surrounded by like four walls with no sunlight and no nothing. Just having their energy being sucked by these walls. And then you go back to the car, drive in traffic, go to the gym, have some mundane workout, and then once you're home, you just put on like your favorite Netflix show, then you sleep, and you repeat the whole thing over and over again. And what's very sad is a tiger in a zoo has the same schedule as you. <laughs> Rhyming. <laughs> and it's sad because like you see these tigers that are in a zoo, they're so much more different than tigers in nature. And it's like you wonder why testosterone nowadays is so low. Because bro, like there's no need for our bodies to produce testosterone. We're not in nature. We don't have the hunter mentality or the predator mentality. Like what do you need testosterone for nowadays? You're just sitting in a cubicle and you get your food, you get your work, you just get everything handed to you. Like you do realize you can take every single supplement in the world, even in inject some testosterone in you and you still won't have high testosterone. You still won't even look like you have high testosterone. And do you know why it's actually this way now? Because bro, you've forgotten your true nature. Your true nature. Like the nature from ever since you were a baby. Have you ever actually looked at a baby? They're basically just like a ball of light. They hold no resentment and they don't like overthink things. They just do things. They're just living in the moment and just absorbing as much of the moment as possible. Bro, like like they have no hate in their heart, just like pureness in their eyes. And they know like no such thing as failure. You know, this one time I actually dropped my nephew, like I was holding him, but he, I just dropped him. <laughs> so he started like crying for a bit. Okay, not for a bit, but like he started crying a lot. But like once he was done, he just got back up and he's like, let's just go play again. He didn't say it, but like he just wanted to go play again with me. And I'm just like, what? I mean, I just dropped you. You're like, you're not going to hate me? But they don't hate. So you know there's like something deep within you that you've lost touch with. And you know what the crazy thing is? Once you're back in touch with this thing that's within you, it's going to be like, like the greatest day of your life. So you know, in the Quran, it actually says that the people who have forgotten Allah, who have forgotten their creator, the creator of life, the creator of the universe, the skies and the earth, the people who have forgotten Allah, they're going to be living in a state of depression constantly, like literally constantly. So if right now you think and you know that you're basically just wasting your life, just realize the only reason why you're wasting your life right now is because you've lost touch with this, with this being that's always been with you ever since you were young and you've lost touch with this being because once again your whole life you've just been programmed with donkey thoughts so how do you actually get back 
to this being? How do you actually get back into the state where whatever you do becomes blessed? Where every single moment you live with no no fear and no sadness? Because you do realize, bro, like sadness and fear, they're not they're not natural states. Like, have you ever seen a baby sitting like depressed? Or sitting like overthinking? Babies don't do that. And the reason why I keep talking about babies is because, again, like babies are just so pure. They're in touch with their true nature. But once they grow up, they start getting bombarded with donkey thoughts once again. So how do you actually get back to that? Well, Habibi, you need to learn how to live in the present moment. You do realize everything actually exists in the present moment. Anything away from the present moment is false. And that's the thing, shaitan always, like the devil, he always tries to take you away from the present moment. And what does it say in the Quran? Allah says that the friends of Allah, they have no fear upon them and no sadness. Why does it say no fear and no sadness? Well, fear comes from what? The future. And sadness comes from what? The past. So once you're actually back with the creator, once you're back with this infinite being, the creator of the heavens and the universe, once you're back with that, once you're back in touch with that, you'll just notice it's like time is infinite now. There's no more past. There's no more future. It's just now the present. And the crazy part about it, bro, like no one actually lives in this state anymore. But it's like, this is the state where happiness actually comes. And I'm not talking about happiness where it's like, oh, I just got a new PS5, I'm so happy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about happiness where when you walk through the world, people notice it. Like people notice the light in your face. People just notice the light in your energy. The same way everyone gets attracted to a baby because they're just like such pureness, like literally a ball of light. That's what starts happening to you once you actually get back to the present moment. And the devil always tries to take you away from this present moment. And once again, bro, once you actually realize that the present moment is all there is, because that's where you can find Allah, you'll notice it's like the greatest day of your life. Because what happens is that you actually get back the power that you have, the power that you've had all along, that you've missed, that you've forgotten. Because remember, again, most of you guys are actually lions. You guys are tigers, but you've lost touch in that. So what I actually say to people most of the time is that you don't really have to condition yourself to become a person who's actually rich. Like, you know how people use affirmations? They're just like, I'm a rich person, I'm a rich person, all, all that stuff. For me, I don't believe in that. I believe that there's actually something hidden deep within you that you've lost touch with. And then once you get back to that, once you remove all the veils or you remove all the dust from your heart and your eyes and you get back to this being, you'll notice it's like, dang man, this is, this is where all my power comes from. And you start moving in the world where it's like, you don't even need to think, you just do stuff and whatever you do becomes blessed. And how do you do that? Present moment, bro. And how do you actually get in the present moment? So the Muslims that are watching me, have you noticed that in Salah, like when you're actually praying Salah, like it forces you every single time to go back in the present moment. And then once you're in the present moment, that's where Khushu' actually comes to you. Like the concentration as we call it. So why do you think you're praying five times a day? Because five times a day, you're leaving this world and you're going back to the present moment. You're leaving the past. You're leaving the future. You're just here. But it's so sad because even right now, like it's gotten to such a point where most Muslims, they pray, their bodies are praying, but their minds and their souls are not even in it. And why is it? Why? And why is the mind not in it? Because you're overthinking. You're overthinking of stuff in the future and you're overthinking of things in the past. And why Why is this happening? Again, bro, you've become a donkey, sadly. <laughs> Honestly, though. And it's so sad because especially when I look at, for example, people, people who are shy, like I genuinely feel sad for them. I used to be shy too. But it's like, why are you actually shy? Something happened in your life where right now you cannot forget it. You can't forget what happened in the past. So you can't even live in the present moment. You do know people who live in the present moment, they're not shy. Why would they be shy? Nothing's really happening that's making them sad or shy in the present moment. And that's why I was saying like time doesn't actually exist because everything is literally happening right now. And this is the crazy part. It's like you want to change the past. Well, the way you change the past is just become present in this moment only. And it's like you become present with this moment and then this moment and then this moment constantly. And then when you change your feelings towards the past, like if you're feeling sad about the past, but then you change your feelings where it's like, you're not really sad anymore because you're in the present moment. That's how you actually change the past. Because again, like the past, the future, all that stuff just exists here. It's not really, it's not really truth. It's not really out there. It's just in your brain. And it's just things that the devil has convinced you that are actually real, but they're not real, bro. And then you'll notice once you actually get past it, it's the greatest day of your life, man. So another way to actually just get in the present moment, like instantly is to become aware of your breath. So there's actually an ayah in the Qur'an that says that when Allah created the human, He actually blew into the human from His own spirit. Now this isn't to say that you are God or like you have God within you, but it's like, you know, for example, like this bottle right here. Let's just say I created this bottle. Basically, when I create this bottle, I'm going to leave my own signature on it. 
Because let's just say someone else is going to come and then they create a bottle. They're going to leave their own signature on it. So what happened is that it's almost like Allah literally has left his signature in you, which means you've been made in the perfect form, which means the breath that you have is so sacred. It's super sacred. You want to find the present moment? Focus on your breath, man. What I mean by that is when you're living, when you're walking through the earth, once you actually become aware of the breath, it's such like it's such an instant awakening that brings you back literally in the present moments right now. And again, like when, when someone is dead, what are they missing? They're missing breath. There's no more breath in them. So again, the breath is so sacred. And then once you're back in the state of like just pure presence, it's actually impossible, bro. It's literally impossible to become sad or to become fearful. Because why? Why? Why would you? Why can't you become sad and fearful? Because here's what happened, bro. When you're in the present moment, when you're with Allah, you know that your safety comes from Allah. It doesn't come from like the government or like your parents or your house. It comes from Allah. And if your safety is with Allah, like what more do you need to be scared of? Especially when you're working like online business. Like why are you scared of losing money? You can't be losing money. You're with Allah. And you know what's sad, bro? This is such a this is such a trap. Let's just say you have a job, right? Like you're working your job and all that stuff. And your boss told you to create something. Like basically create some art or whatever. And he told you, let me see this art. A few days pass by, you go and you show him this art. And your boss is like, what is this freaking garbage? He hates your art. And basically he's gonna tell you, listen Habibi, this art is freaking garbage. Why are you, this isn't what I asked for. Basically, if your boss, for example, like someone who has like authority on you, when they start criticizing you, most people what they do is that they start feeling sad, bro. <laughs> like it's common sense, right? And then what happens is that they go even, they go beyond the sadness. Like they start criticizing themselves. They start saying things like, oh, I'm such a bad artist. I'm such a bad employee. I'm such a bad this, such a bad that. But don't you realize when that actually happens, You've lost the present moment. But it's like, don't you realize that all that stuff is just happening in your brain? It's not actually happening in reality. It's just your brain. Now, let's just say, for example, the same scenario happens where your boss criticizes you. He's like, what is this freaking garbage art? But this time, you are the type of person that's actually living in the present moment. You're not worried about the future. You're not worried about the past. What's going to happen now? Well, here's what's going to happen. You look at the situation as it's happening right now. So it's almost like you live with no memory. And this is how babies live, by the way. They actually live with no memory. Like... Bro, I dropped my nephew and he knows that I dropped him. He just got up after after crying and it's just like almost nothing happened. He's just back to playing with me, <laughs> you know? So when your boss criticized you, well, okay, you just take the criticism, you take it as feedback and you go back and you improve. There's no like, there's no thoughts of like, oh, I'm so not worth it. Oh, I'm so this. It's like, I can't, I'm such a bad artist. There's no such thoughts because again, those thoughts are just past. It's just things in your brain that happens. And bro, like... Don't you guys realize, this is something crazy, but don't you guys realize that once again, you know how, let's, let, let's just say I created this, right? Well, before I created this, I had an idea, right, of creating this whole thing. Now, what's crazy, bro, is that don't you realize that you were once an idea in God's mind? Like, just think about that for a bit. You were once an idea in God's mind. Like how how valuable is that? That's actually freaking beautiful. How valuable is that? That you're not you're not just some like insignificant thing. You're not just like some thing who's been put here with no purpose and no reason. Like it's actually crazy. Like it's almost like Allah or God literally thought this world is not the same without you. And as a result, he created you. And then all you have to do to actually go beyond the suffering, go beyond the sadness and the fear and all that stuff, and then stop wasting your life. It's just to go back to the present moment and then just get back with Allah. Get back with the Creator. Just be in touch. All you have to do, bro, is just bring it to your awareness. That's it. Once you actually bring the Creator back to your awareness, it's literally almost like things start to automatically fix themselves. Like if you had problems, the problems would automatically fix themselves. Because again, at this point, you're not living in the past. You're not living in the future. You're just living in now. And this is such a gift. This is, bro, like this is literally one of the best gifts because what's happening is that you're almost like removing yourself from taking control because the mind is so limited. The mind takes a while to actually react with all overthinking, with all the sadness and the fear and all that stuff. But once you're back, once you're back with the being, once you're back with living in the flow, living in the present moment, not getting scared of the future or being sad about the past, you'll notice it's like, it's almost like you literally let Allah run your whole life. And that's actually beautiful because it's like, What's repentance, bro? Repentance is just going back to Allah. Like, why does it say when you've had so much sins and all that stuff, and then you go back, it's almost like those sins become good deeds. It's true. Like, you, you can actually see it. You can see tangible results. Like, you can mess up so bad. This is the crazy part. Like, you can mess up so bad. You can be killing so many people. You can do everything horrible. But once you're back to this state of presence with Allah, 
Everything, bro, like everything gets fixed. Now, listen, I'm not saying go and do bad stuff. I'm not saying that. Don't do bad stuff and then be like, oh, Muhammad said that so I can do it. No, bro. I'm just saying right now, if you actually feel like you're wasting your whole life, man, all you need to do, and this is so simple, and it might seem, bro, it might seem like I'm oversimplifying things and it's like I'm just giving you, selling you like a dream and all that stuff. But who's saying that, man? Your mind is saying that because your mind is living in the past and the future. But once you actually get back to the present moment, once you get back to that, Allah or God the Creator is going to fix your life automatically. If you've been wasting your life up until this point, just realize the point that you actually go back with the Creator, you become aware of the being that's been with you all along, life automatically starts to get fixed. Automatically, I'm saying. And this is crazy, but bro, like I've seen this happening in my own life too. It's like, all I have to do Literally, all I have to do is just become aware of it again. And it's like, be in the present moment. Be aware of the breath. Be aware of things that are happening in your body. Like, truly, be aware of the body. Be aware of the thoughts that are happening in your brain. Know that you're not the one that's, like, thinking. You're the one that's actually aware of the thinking. And then when you're praying your salah, when you're praying the salah, you're just, you'll, you'll just notice, bro. It's like, it becomes infused with goodness once again. You'll actually start to have, like, khushu' what's in it. Or like concentration. And then when you start reading like the Quran, you'll you'll actually feel like it's actually talking exactly to you. Because it truly is. And why do you feel that way? Because again, bro, you, you've gotten back in touch with your true nature. Instead of like your whole life you're living as like a donkey, you eat donkey food, you think donkey thoughts, you do donkey things, because like you've you've just been programmed to be a donkey. But what happens is that even once you actually reach like the top of the top as a donkey, you'll still feel like you're not really fulfilled. And why aren't you fulfilled? Because, bro, you're not a donkey. <laughs> I mean, I know it's obvious, but you're not a donkey. You know what I mean? You're actually a tiger. Like, you have the hunger of a tiger. And this tiger can only be fulfilled once you're back with the creator. Because, again, just like the bottle, we've been created, man. And once you're back with the creator, everything starts to fix automatically. Automatically. And this is how you stop wasting your life.